studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary. Entertainment. entertainment, and sports. sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. Here is Steve Malsberg. All right, folks, uh, I just want to bring you up to date on some uh, issues as we uh, await the arrival, hopefully, as I said, of Congressman Blake Farenhold. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, for him right now in the House, and hopefully he will have time for us in this segment. But uh, let me bring you up to date on something that we haven't managed to talk about in the past few days. Uh, we uh, have uh, spoken to uh, the mother of our brave Marine who is being held in a Mexican prison on several occasions as recently as last week. Uh, but there's some new news, and it's, I, I view it as kind of disturbing. The attorney, the attorney uh, for uh, our brave Marine, uh, Andrew uh, Tamarisi, says uh, that supporters of the, uh, of the Marine sergeant need to be patient. Need to be patient. I want to bring you the correct quote. I would ask people to be patient. There's going to be an outcome. I hope it's an outcome everybody likes, but it's not going to be tomorrow. And he says that the case is a long way from being resolved. Now, I got to tell you, I'm with his mom. I'm with the sergeant's mom, not the lawyer's mom. I don't know her. I'm with the sergeant's mom. And I don't understand. You see, I thought Mexico was our ally, OK? I thought Mexico was our ally. Here we have an active duty US Marine who made a wrong turn, didn't see a sign, whatever, winds up across the border. There are guns in the car. OK, big deal. We can't get him back. He's treated like garbage. Yet, yet, Mexico sends every single day illegals over the border to our country. They tell them how to come, how to beat the system, how to beat the border guards, where to cross, and we're supposed to welcome them with open arms and love them, and we have great relations with Mexico. Someone explain that to me. Someone explain that to me. All right, we're joined right now, I'm very happy to say, by Congressman uh, Blake Farinol. Before we uh, are joined by him, though, let's, uh, let's watch him in, in action. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner. And there's a lot of passion on this, especially on my side of the aisle. I was at home this weekend, and it's all anybody was talking about. The American people don't believe for a second that this stuff was uh, lost accidentally. Mike Richline, a friend of mine used to work at my computer consulting company, still in the business to email me, Blake, there's no way this could happen. You, you got to do something about it. And that's, that's the frustration that I'm getting from the American people. And Congressman, welcome aboard, sir, and uh, thank you for making the time. Boy, you were, you were pretty tame compared to some of the other uh, members of your committee. Listen, the facts speak for themselves. We don't need to be yelling and screaming and uh, beating on our chest when anybody with a lick of common sense uh, knows that uh, email just doesn't disappear like this. Email doesn't just disappear, and, and the head of the IRS says, I don't remember who told me they disappeared. Uh, I didn't tell anybody, not even at the Justice Department, where I knew there was an investigation, a criminal investigation ongoing, because I didn't see any crim evidence of criminal activity. Well, you didn't see the emails. I mean, it's enough to make me lose my temper. So what, what, what did you take out of yesterday and then today, the, the uh, archivist of the uh, United States saying that they did not, the IRS did not follow the law when it came to keeping copies of the email. I mean, the list just keeps on growing, no, doesn't it? I'm flabbergasted. If we'd done this uh, in the private sector and, you know, had gotten a, a government order to preserve data and we hadn't immediately taken action to preserve data, Trey Gowdy really hit on it. If, when, the, when you can't produce the data that you're required to produce, the jury is entitled to take a negative inference from it. You know, the email isn't there probably because it had bad stuff in it. Yeah. All right. Well, well, well. I mean, what was the most shocking? What What you think of? You talk about your fellow uh, committee members not needing to pound their chest and get angry because the facts speak for themselves. What about the presentation uh, uh, of the IRS commissioner, who you know was wasn't he installed to try to fix things? Listen, he was supposed to be a guy of the highest integrity who both sides of the aisle uh, 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 trusted. And I don't know what it is when you come in, in contact with this White House, what happens to your uh, ethics? 
and your moral compass. Well, he refused to apologize. Uh, he, he, he fought back. He, say, he claims he did nothing wrong, nothing unethical. He see no evidence of, of impropriety or anything of that nature. He did admit, however, and I think this is noteworthy, if not newsworthy, Congressman, hope you'll agree, or maybe not, uh, that, and I forget which Congressman it was that got him to admit this, uh, that it wasn't just a couple of guys in Cincinnati, as the White House had said, and he even basically um, got, almost got him to admit that the president was wrong when he said there wasn't a smidgen of impropriety. Well, again, I, I think the fact that they're stonewalling on every possible uh, avenue uh, speaks volumes. And listen, I know in, in our system of government, you can't, uh, you can't draw any inferences from somebody pleading the Fifth Amendment. But I think we need to offer uh, Lois Lerner immunity and find out what she really knew. All right. Well, I mean, so you think? You, I mean, is this a deal still workable? You give her, the, you give her immunity. Do you need to know, as a committee, what she knows before you give her that immunity? What she's willing to say? That, and that's what I think. That's where the negotiating uh, has broken down. You know, they they need to give us some idea what she's going to say in exchange for immunity, and they're not they're not willing to do that. Now, you know, if, if I I would take the immunity offer, you know? But I guess you got to be worried about the repercussions uh, from from the White House. Well, n not only that, Congressman, with all I mean with all due respect, what is she afraid of? Uh, the Justice Department's not going to send her to jail. They're not going to prosecute her. I, I don't know if they think if they think they she's turned on the president Katie bar the door, I think. You, you just don't know what... Oh, no, no, no. If she... No, no. I, I understand that. What I mean is what's wrong with her maintaining the status quo? Just keeping quiet and going on with her life? And I mean, yeah, the ball's in our court. We've got to do something, and that offer uh, of immunity uh, may, be, uh, may be what it takes. Uh, maybe we find a way to... Uh, some other ways to get her to testify. We've got to continue to investigate this. I, you know... As frustrated as I am with the Obama administration, I believe the majority of the American people are good, honest folks. And somebody within the IRS or somebody who knows what's going on is going to come forward as a whistleblower. It's only the right thing to do. Well, we've had it in several other instances, certainly with the veterans scandal. And the latest there is uh, that, uh, that the, as recently as not too long ago, once the news was already out, they still fudged the books and the numbers, uh, and more people died apparently or reportedly while waiting uh, and, and being denied uh, 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 medical treatment. But I want to I get back to this for a second. What can Congress do? Uh, if, if Lois Lerner does not cut a deal with you guys, what can, and, and the Justice Department does not prosecute anybody, what can, if anything, can Congress do to hold somebody responsible for this? Well, this is the, uh, this is the ultimate challenge. What do you... What do you do when you have an attorney general that's not cooperative? Historically, the Justice Department has been Congress's ally in uh, fighting wrongdoing in government. But under this Justice Department and Eric Holder, rather than being the people's attorney, Eric Holder sees himself as the president's attorney. And he'll do anything to uh, defend the president. We're kind of in uncharted territory when you don't have a cooperative Justice Department. Yeah, I know. So, so legally, there's nothing uh, that you could tell me, because it probably doesn't exist. I don't mean you don't know. Legally, there's nothing you could make, make me and the, the viewers feel better and say, well, we could do this, and, you know, and as a result, so-and-so could maybe right, go so to Congress's jail. Congress's job is to pass laws. Right. It's the executive branch's right. job to enforce it. Right. If they're unwilling to enforce it, uh, I don't think that was contemplated by <laughs> the founding fathers. And I, so we, we can pass laws. We can file... Uh, under, in, under some circumstances, we can file lawsuits, and we're con looking at ways of finding jurisdiction because individual Congress people don't have jurisdiction to right. file suits, but perhaps the whole Congress does. And you know, ultimately, we have impeachment a as an option for uh, Eric Holder or uh, maybe even the president if we get sufficient evidence that there have been laws broken. But that's not going to go anywhere because it takes two-thirds in the Senate. The House can impeach, but that doesn't remove uh, the attorney general or the president from office. Uh, you've got to have a conviction, a trial, and then eventually a conviction Two in the thirds. Senate. And if yeah. you think that's going to happen uh, under Harry Reid... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, we, lear we learned about uh, the impeachment rules, uh, some of us who were there at that point, uh, back uh, for, for Bill Clinton. Uh, what, what did you think of the behavior of not your, not your uh, side of the aisle, but uh, some of the Democrats who, who just came to the defense blindly of the IRS and the commissioner, and, and one went so far as to say that, uh, you know, uh, Congress, uh, the, the House and the Republicans have been responsible for just uh, ripping apart the IRS, making it impossible for them to do their job, blaming the government shutdown? Well, and they're saying the IRS doesn't have the resources to do it. Their method for preserving email to uh, to go with uh, comply with the Federal Records Act is to print it out. Now, listen, I used to work in the computer business. It costs between five and eight cents for every page that you print out when you figure paper and toner and all the associated costs. So go down to Amazon, buy a $59 uh, terabyte hard drive, install it in one of your existing servers, and then uh, a terabyte holds, uh, I think was, I did the math last night, <laughs> I think it's 64 million nine-page documents. So th that's basically, uh, you'd save $21 million buying a $59 oh hard drive boy. on Amazon. I'll tell you, my, my favorite answer from the IRS commissioner, one of them, I guess, but I think this ranks at the top, was when asked, who told you that Lois Lerner's emails were gone, that she threw away the hard drive? He couldn't remember, and one of his excuses was, uh, it, it was reporting season. You know, I got 90,000 employees. It was reporting season. Well, you know, I, didn't, I ran out of time. The question I didn't get to ask yeah. that I wanted to ask was you te that he testified there were five people who uh, reported to him uh, about the lowest right. the hard drive. Give me all five names. Right. We'll, we'll call them up. Ask them which one told Congressman, you. appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. Congressman Blake Farron, we're coming back on the Steve Malsberg Show.